Hi, Tim Alden here. Today I'm going to show you how I came up with my pattern for the Hey Dudes and how I'm going to draw a floral pattern for the Hey Dudes. So we have our Hey Dude shoes here. I just put some masking tape. That way I can kind of get an idea of where I want this tooling to go. There's an old shoemaker's trick from Tape and Last. You can draw on the pattern and uh, transfer it to paper. And so this is a piece of Yankee wax. I use it versus a pencil. That way you don't get something on the fabric that may or may not want to come off. You could use a crayon. It's probably the closest thing to what this is, but it's a polishing wax for uh, boot repairs. It's called Yankee wax. You can probably get a chunk of it from a local boot repair shop. I took the laces out. I've opened this up. And so I'm just going to roll around here and you'll have to play around with this. Once you get this uh, pattern on here, kind of get an idea of, you know, where your seams are, we can say, okay, well, it's going to start folding over here. And so we really, you know, we want to come in because we don't want this to bind up. And if you put a little arc in here and then stop a little bit short, some of these shoes, even though this is a number nine, um, the pattern fits a little bit differently on every pair. So they're not like super true to the pattern, but you can kind of come up with stuff that, you know, if this is a little bit shorter on another pair and you leave a little, you know, a quarter of an inch difference, it's not going to be that big of a deal. And, you know, you can check your pattern when you get your shoes in to make sure it fits and you can either, you know, copy it and reduce it or uh, if you do have to change it, um, you can. So I'm drawing just to the inside of that top seam here um, with my pencil. I kind of got an idea when I traced it with the uh, um, Yankee Wax. And really, you pull this off and you stick it down to some poster board. And you may make one pattern and say, oh, well, it, it doesn't, you know, fill in that seam. My goal is to have that tooled piece sit right up against the seam and even a little bit snug if possible, rather than have a gap in between my tooling and the stitch. And so um, then you just pull this off and stick it down to a piece of cardstock, kind of rub the uh, wrinkles out of it and cut it out, peel the tape off and test it. So we already actually have a pattern made, so we don't need that. We have our pattern here, and I've just laid out a quick guesstimate of my flow line. That way I uh, can do it a little smoother on, on camera. But you can kind of see how that just, it goes right up to the seams. It's gonna sit right down in there a little bit snug. We're gonna have to pull this out just a little bit when we stick it down to sew it. We got a little bit of room up here. Like I said, these, for whatever reason, depending on the fabric that you get, um, there'll be a little variation. And then it tapers in here in the middle. That way when this folds over up in here, we just don't want it to bind up and pinch the person's foot. So there's no sense in putting something in there that's not gonna fold or it's gonna go clear down to that. So. We'll go ahead and get started on drawing our pattern. I'll just kind of show you the process that I go through um, when I draw a pattern. I mean, this is, this is transferable to basically anything. And so we'll start out with point of origin. Sometimes I'll do a, you know, scroll where it just rolls around. If you have a bigger project, it'll kind of spin out of a, scroll that's a continuous scroll um, where it's just going around and around and around. There's no real stop or start. And then it spins off to another uh, scroll that does have a stop. 
that has a terminal point and then it can go around. You'll see those. Um, or if it's big enough, you can make it loop back in itself. This one, it's just really not uh, worth your while. I mean, depending on what you're charging for these, maybe it is worth your while. But the way I look at it, $500 pair of shoes, pretty hard sell. So we're gonna go with uh, just a little more basic pattern on these because the more complex patterns you uh, tool is just gonna take more time and you're gonna have to charge more. So I'm gonna go with my point of origin coming up, coming down from here, because really a lot of this is gonna be covered up when those shoes fold over anyways. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room to add stuff in here. I'm gonna kinda of roll around here. And this is just a basic sketch of where this is gonna kind of roll around, how I'm gonna fill in this space. And so I'm gonna spin off this direction, put a leaf of some kind in here. Um, gotta fill this corner in here. And so probably gonna use kind of a bigger uh, element to roll around, wrap around my uh, stem. Kind of like so. And now that I got that basic line, I know that I can reach out here with stickers or you know a turn back and um, different stem work to fill this space. And that's all we're trying to do is, it's like Tetris. We're gonna fill this space with uh, different shapes that look good. And so, Start dialing this in. So we're gonna kind of roll, this is gonna be our flower stem, what leads into our flower stem. And so you wanna be real cautious with getting this too narrow here. You want to have about an eighth of an inch gap because once you cut it it's going to get a little smaller then you bevel it it's going to get a little smaller yet and if you don't have a decent stem width probably going to have trouble executing your tooling with our leaf stem rolling out here. Just gonna try to fill in some of this space. So I'm actually going to run that down to where it just touches that border. And once I do that, this is a pretty good gap here. So I'm just going to open that up. That original flow line is just kind of get the idea of, okay, where are we going to put, you know, the big pieces? And then we can adjust it. as we're filling things in.
so thick across here. Might as well stop it. Okay, so there's a little uh, gap here in where we were. Um, wasn't exactly happy with the way this was coming out. And I almost scrapped it and started out fresh, but what I ended up doing in the problem that I kind of worked myself into was as I was too far in here and so that was going to make this you can kind of see this faint line where one of my stickers was and it was just too thick here it was too narrow to pull off this direction with a sticker um, but it was going to be really chunky and then everything would flow down and taper out here and so I really didn't like how that was turning out so I went ahead and erased that and I just pushed it out to where and we've got one sticker coming from this side it fades into our border and then our border is basically like our outside sticker we're gonna have an eighth of an inch gap here or thereabouts as it rolls around so our stem width never gets thicker than it should I really hate when you get you know stuff like this it'll get really thick and then it'll taper down and you want consistent stem width and so I just bumped this out which is actually going to push this around at a better location than if we were coming in here there's just it's pretty tight in that corner and you can't pull off the other direction or not with the way I laid this out anyway um, and so we're just going to uh, roll out here and continue to uh, put some stickers on here and we can always change these into something else or move them around a little bit and typically I'll just start out with your basic sticker kind of that way I can have things evenly spaced I know this guy is going to be the start of that vine that wraps around so I'll just push it out where I want it to be. Pretty good reach to get there. So I'm going to take that out there. I'm going to bump this one up a little bit. sticker in here I'm just gonna push this one down 
a little bit more and then I don't have to reach so far around to touch this border. I hate background and around something like this. And so if I can run out and touch this border, touch this border and then roll around, I'm gonna be far happier with the, the end result. I'm just gonna roll up. I'm gonna come out above this guy, I think. A lot happier with that. Sticker in here. And so this, I draw it through, that way I have it a smooth line, but that is just gonna wrap around the back side of that, and then this front's gonna stick out. It's gonna come out right there, and it'll overlap. Sticker just sitting right there, filling that space in. And so, right here, um, we've got a pretty good gap here. And so, if we roll around, put a little turn back element there, we're going to start kind of filling this stuff in with. Uh, more advanced elements to fill our space in. Okay. So now, we'll decide what kind of flower we want in here. We go with an oval flower center. It's kind of got an oval shape here. Um, maybe bring our flower center down just a little bit so it's a little more centered on this open space that we have. Start filling this in. You could, you know, draw an oval, um, 
kind of pattern, but really I'm just going to uh, kind of just start filling in this space with kind of the, the room that we have. Get rid of some of that background stuff that's ending up getting kind of covered up. It's looking. So we got that flower petal just rolling out and you can see the back side of this petal as it folds around there. So this petal here is going to be folding backwards, is what we're going to carve that as. Okay, so I think we're uh, pretty much where we want to be as far as uh, filling our space. I'm going to throw in a little turn back in there. 
just so we don't have so much background. This guy, just a little kind of a curly cue rolling around there. Break up the background. So now we just kind of got to clean up some lines a little bit. Nothing too uh, serious. Just kind of smooth things out. Define what what is a line that we want to carve and what's just extra. Um, so we'll go ahead and clean this up. We'll get it ready to put on leather and uh, we'll go ahead and carve this out. This leaf, you could leave it just smooth and carve it a bunch of different ways. Um, you could put scallops on it. Um, the leaf that I have in mind for this, I'm just gonna make that uh, stem a little bit more down the center of that leaf. Um, I'm just going to cut this round, so I'm not going to have to uh, do much with it right here. Well, thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate you uh, watching these videos. Really excited about this pattern. Started off a little bit rough when I got my flow line there, kind of had to back up and um, I'm really happy with the consistency and that everything just kind of, uh, it has a good weight to it. Um, so a little bit rusty, spent a lot of time on the phone um, talking to people about sewing machines and shipping orders, but Anyway, it's good to be back in the saddle. This is probably my most favorite thing to do is draw patterns and carve stuff. So good to be back at the bench and we'll see you next time.